HowNetworkingWorks.com End-to-end communication, building packets. Part of HowTCPIPWorks.com End-to-end communication, building packets. In this section, we'll first take a look at a standard computer and we'll compare its networking configuration to the OSI model. Then we'll take a look at a detailed networking example of end to communications. In this example, we'll go step by step and we'll build a packet, we'll transfer that packet across the network, and then we'll track the server's response. The OSI computer. Before we start building packets, let's take a look at the OSI model, TCP, and the standard computer. In yellow, we have all seven layers of the OSI model listed. Next to it, we have the TCP IP suite of protocols, and we can see that at the data link layer and the physical layer, we have Ethernet. At the network layer, we have IP. At the transport layer, TCP and UDP. And then at the session presentation and application layers, we have HTTP and HTML. On the far left, we have a functional diagram of a computer, and we match up the portions of the computer that provide the TCP IP functions. In the case of Ethernet, we can see at the physical layer, the network interface card is what is Ethernet. At the data link layer, the network interface card and its associated software driver is Internet. At the network layer, the IP software is part of the TCP IP software on the computer. Likewise, at the transport layer, TCP and UDP is part of the TCP IP software on the computer. As far as the HTTP and the HTML, well, on the client side, the web browser provides those services, and on the server side, the web server. The OSI computer building packets. In the next almost two dozen slides, we'll be going through a detailed analysis of TCP communication between a client running a web browser and a server running a web server. During this analysis, we'll see how packets are built, how connections are set up, and then finally, how the data is sent back to the client. End-to-end -end communication. In our example, we have a web browser on the left, represented by the block diagram, and on the right, we have a web server. You can see that they're both connected to hubs, and those hubs are connected to a router. In our example, the user is going to go to the web browser, type in HTTP colon whack whack www.xyz.com. It's the URL of the web server. Now at this point, we're going to track the creation of packets and how packets travel through the network. Step one, IP address resolution. Now the user has typed in www.xyz.com into their web browser. But before we can use TCP IP to connect to another server, the computer has to get the IP address of the destination computer. And for that, it uses DNS. The TCP IP software in each machine has a special DNS program called a DNS resolver. And that DNS resolver will send a request to the DNS server it's configured for, for the IP address of www.xyz.com. The DNS server will retrieve that information and will return the IP address to the client computer. If you'd like more information on how DNS works, please see the presentation on DNS, howdnsworks.com. Step two, creating the HTTP packet. Now that we've got the IP address of the web server, now again, the client computer's in the blue and the web server is in the yellow, the web browser on the client will create a HTTP packet. And because this is a request for a website, it will create a HTTP get packet and include in that the fully qualified domain name of the website it's trying to access. Now once the HTTP get packet has been created, then it will pass it to the TCP program below it. Step three, create the TCP connection. At this point, the web browser has created an HTTP packet that's going to request the home page of the website. It has handed that HTTP packet over to the TCP program. But before the TCP program can send that request, it has to create the TCP connection. And that's the next step. So this is where the TCP program will initiate a three-way handshake to set up the connection. In the TCP section, we talked about how the client computer would send out a TCP packet called a data packet with a request for a connection. The server, when it received that TCP packet, would send a packet back that would include an ACK, an acknowledgement that, yes, I will set up a, a connection, and include that some information or data about itself. Then, when the client receives that second packet, 
that data ACK packet, it would then respond with a ACK for the third packet of the three-way handshake. Now once this three-way handshake has been completed, then the client can begin transferring data. Step four, create the TCP packet. Now that we've set up the TCP connection, we can actually transfer data. So we will take the HTTP packet, the original request created by the web browser, and add our TCP headers on it. Then we will take the combined packet, the TCP and HTTP, and then give it to the IP program for continued processing. Step five, create an IP packet. Now that the IP program has the combined packet that includes the TCP information and the HTTP information, we can go about creating the IP packet. Now IP will then create an IP header and add it to our existing packet. And the IP header will include things like the source and destination IP address. Now remember at the beginning of this process, DNS retrieved the IP address of the destination computer. So we will use the IP addresses plus other configuration information in the IP header, and then once IP has created the IP header, the entire packet will be handed to Ethernet. Step six, determine the destination Ethernet or MAC address. Now we know that inside the IP header is the destination IP address, but that's not the only address we have to add to a packet. We also have to add a Ethernet or a MAC address. The Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP, uses a local and remote algorithm and in a special ARP packet to determine the destination MAC address. In this situation, because the destination computer is remote, and it is considered remote because the destination computer is on the other side of the router, the address resolution protocol will retrieve the MAC address of the router, and the Ethernet packet will be addressed to the router. If you'd like to get a detailed understanding of how the address resolution protocol works, see the ARP portion of LearnToSubnet.com. So once the destination MAC address has been determined, Ethernet is given the destination MAC address and then the complete packet. Now remember, this is the HTT packet that has TCP headers on it and that has IP headers. And of course, in the IP header is the destination IP address. Step seven, create the Ethernet packet. At this point, Ethernet will take the packet, which includes the IP header, the TCP header, and the HTTP information, and then encapsulate it in its Ethernet header. Now, in the Ethernet header, remember, we have things like the source and destination MAC address. And then in the CRC, remember, that's our cyclic redundancy check that will be calculated and used for error detection. Step eight, transferring the Ethernet packet. Now, once the entire packet has been built, then the Ethernet network interface card will need to put that packet on the wire. Now, remember, the method in which access is controlled to the wire this is the media access method for Ethernet is carrier sense multiple access and collision detection. So once Ethernet has used this method to get access to the wire, it will then take the bits, the actual zeros and ones that are the packet, and then transfer them into an electrical waveform based upon its encoding scheme. That's Manchester encoding. Now remember from our discussion in Ethernet is the packet will go to the hub and then the hub will forward it to everything that's connected to that hub and this will send the packet to the router. Step nine, the router routes the packet. Now at this point, the ethernet packet has been sent to the router. The router receives it on its ethernet card. Ethernet on the router processes the packet, it determines its IP and then hands it to the IP program. The IP program then takes a look at the IP header of the packet and it focuses in on the destination IP address. It compares the destination IP address of this packet to its routing table to determine where to route the packet. In this case, it determines that the packet is destined for a computer on a segment that is directly connected to it. So it will use the address resolution protocol to determine the, the MAC address of the destination computer. Once it has the destination computer's MAC address, it will take the packet, the IP packet, and all that it contains and add to it an Ethernet header with the MAC address of the destination computer. It will then take that Ethernet packet, turn it into electrical waveform and send it out on the wire. The hub will receive the packet and then forward it to all stations on that segment. Then the Ethernet card on the destination computer will receive that packet. Step 10, the destination computer receives the Ethernet packet. Now when the destination computer receives the Ethernet packet, the first thing it does is checks the CRC 
to make sure that the packet isn't corrupt. Remember, if the packet is corrupt, the Ethernet card will discard that packet and wait for the next one. Now, if the Ethernet packet is not corrupt, the CRC checks out, then the Ethernet station will check the destination MAC address against its own. Now, if the incoming packet does not have the destination MAC address that matches up with this computer, this computer will ignore that packet. If the destination MAC address matches this computer's, then Ethernet will see that this packet is meant for it, and then it will look at the Ethernet type field. Now, in this case, the Ethernet type field will be set to 0800. That will indicate to Ethernet that the contents of this packet is an IP packet. Then it will take the contents of the packet and then pass it to the IP program for continued processing. Step 11, IP processes the packet. Now, IP has just received a packet, and the first thing IP will do will check the destination IP address. In this case, the destination IP address will match its own because it is the destination computer. But if it was a router, the destination IP address wouldn't match it. In the case of a router, then the router would have to route the packet. In this case, this packet is destined for this machine. So the next thing IP will do is check to see if the packet has been fragmented. If it has been fragmented, then it will wait for additional packet fragments. Once it has all the packet fragments, it will reassemble the packet into its original order. Then it will check the protocol ID field. In the case of this packet, the protocol ID field will be set to 6. This means that the contents of the IP packet is a TCP packet. Then at this point, the IP program will take the contents of the IP packet which is really a TCP packet, and then hand it to the TCP program for continued processing. Step 12, TCP processes the packet. Now TCP has just received a packet, and the first thing TCP will do will be to send out an acknowledgement to the sending computer. Actually, depending upon its configuration, the TCP program may wait for multiple TCP packets to arrive before it sends out an acknowledgement. But to send out that acknowledgement, it has to create a TCP acknowledgement packet, hand it to IP, then IP has to address it for the, the originating computer, then the address resolution protocol must retrieve the proper MAC address, and then with the proper MAC address, an Ethernet header can be added to this packet, and then the TCP acknowledgement can be sent back to the originating computer. Keep in mind that all TCP packets that are received have to be acknowledged in this process. TCP will then check for packet segmentation. If the original data had been segmented into multiple TCP packets, the receiving TCP station will wait for all those segments, it will recombine those segments into the original data, and then pass it to the upper layer protocol. Step 13, HTTP processes the packet. Now in this case, TCP has handed the HTTP packet up to the web server. The web server will look at that packet, it's a get, it's a request for its home page, and then the server will then create a response. Step 14, HTTP responds. A request has been made to our web server, and the request has been for a home page. So our web server retrieves our home page. Now remember, our home page is formatted in HTML. It will take the HTML plus any graphics and put them in a HTTP response packet. Then it will take that HTTP packet and give it to TCP for continued processing. Step 15, the data is sent back to the requester. Now, the HTTP packet is given to TCP. TCP adds its headers. It hands it to IP. IP adds its headers. And then it's given to Ethernet. Now then Ethernet will send the packet through the router back to the requesting station. Step 16, the requester processes the response. Now we've got the response to the original request that's been sent from the server back to the client. Now when the client receives it on its Ethernet connection, the Ethernet program and the client will do those things that Ethernet does. It will pass up the IP packet to IP. IP will do what IP does. IP will then pass it to TCP and TCP will continue to process it. Finally, the result of the packet, which is H. HTML is given to the web browser and displayed on the client computer as the web page. So the process is pretty straightforward in that when a request is made by a client, the original request is an HTTP packet. And then as that packet is handed down the stack, each protocol adds additional headers. And that's how we build the packet. Then on the receiving side, 
as the packet is received and processed up the stack, each protocol removes its header until finally the original request, the HTTP request, goes to the server. The response then goes back down the stack in which the stack adds the headers. The response goes to the client. It goes up the stack and of course as it goes up the stack the client strips out the headers that were created by the server until it just has the response and that's of course what's displayed on the web browser. Review. In this section we saw how we can use the OSI model to analyze network communications and in our end-to-end -end communication example we saw how packets are built, transferred to servers and how servers respond to them by building packets and transferring back to clients.